Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you've been well. I need a haircut. That's why I'm wearing a hat. I need a haircut bad, so I'll be getting one of those soon, but you don't care about that. You care about shoes, which is why I clicked this video. So through the years, I've been asked about shoes. What shoes would you recommend for the range? What shoes would you recommend for the trail? What shoes would you recommend for this or that? Uh, and a shoe that I've been recommending for years because I've been wearing them for years are the Solomon Speed Crosses. Um, I bought my first pair a couple years ago. I, I don't think I have them anymore. I think this is my second pair technically that I bought. Uh, and I've had, I just, I keep buying them because I like all the different colors. Anyway, so I'll be talking about the Speedcross 4s a little bit and the 3s, though they're pretty much the same shoe. At the end of the video, towards the end of the video, I'll ta be talking about some other projects I have coming up on the channel, some gun builds and things like that. So if you're into that kind of thing, stay tuned to the end. But for those that aren't into that kind of thing and you're just here for the shoes, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the Speed Crosses, these are pretty dirty, but these are the Speed Cross 4s. I do have a pair of the 4s, which are the current model. Uh, and then I have a few pairs of the 3s. So the difference between the 4s and the 3s, there isn't honestly much different. They kind of have the same strengths and the same weaknesses. So for all intents and purposes, the 4s are very, very similar to the 3s. These 3s right here, are the Speedcross 3 Forces. Uh, now the Forces are a kind of a special edition and I I knew the backstory at some point, I don't really know. I, I think maybe they were for kind of like special Forces units that needed low visibility shoes, no reflectors, no bright colors, anything like that. So that's what they are. Uh, fortunately, us civilians can get them too and they are the, kind of the coolest, most tactical, I guess, looking model that you can get. So here is a pair of Speedcross 3s. These are not forces. So they have kind of some reflective elements, some bright colors and stuff like that. And the forces do not. So yeah, let's get into kind of the pros, kind of the things that I like about the shoe. I'll talk about some cons as well. Oh, and then real quick, the 3s and the 4s, they're both uh, on the narrow side. Uh, so if you have really, really fat feet, uh, these might not be the shoes for you. I have wider than average feet uh, and they work for me still, but I wear a 10 and a half in the Speedcross 3s and I wear an 11 in the 4s. So the 4s I feel like got a little bit tighter or at least a little bit more narrow. So I would say Speedcross 3 is pretty much true to size. Speedcross 4 you might want to get like a half size up. Other than that, there's no, there's no big differences between the shoes. Uh, so yeah, like I said, they're a little narrow, but they break in pretty quickly. Uh, when you're gonna, when you first put them on, you'll probably notice that they're pretty tight. But after a hike or two, uh, they're gonna really form to your foot really well. So tight at first, and really on the narrow side, forever. But they do break in pretty quick, uh, and they they fit really well. These things just really hug my feet, but not in a bad way. You know, they don't give me blisters, or they don't feel like they're they're too binding or anything like that, but a really great fit. So where these shoes excel the most, I would say, is traction. You see these crazy lugs on the bottom here, and they're basically like cleats. So what that means is these are gonna have great traction on the trail, uh, but where they're not gonna be that great is if you put a lot of miles on the pavement. So if you're a pavement runner, I probably wouldn't recommend these shoes. Can they run on the pavement? Certainly, yeah, definitely, but they'll wear out pretty quick. So if you're getting these solely to run on pavement, I would say that's a bad choice. Uh, if you're primarily running on trails, these I think can't really be beat. They excel in mud and just, I mean, so mud because they, they clear, they don't get caked up with mud as easy as most other shoes. They'll, they'll clear the mud, the mud will fling out from them because it doesn't like, doesn't have all the surface area to stick to it in the little kind of treads of a typical shoe. So they work really well in the mud, uh, but they really work really well all over the place. I filmed a bunch of footage of these shoes uh, while I was out on hikes uh, in Washington and in Colorado. And unfortunately, very recently, I accidentally wiped my whole SD card. So I lost all that footage and some other footage. Uh, I was doing a bunch of time-lapse videos of some 3D prints. And basically it takes like a million pictures and I tried to just delete all the pictures, but keep the video. And I ended up just wiping the whole memory card because I'm an idiot. Uh, so I was gonna put a bunch, I was gonna splice a bunch of like 
camping or hiking footage of these shoes on various terrain and water and rocks and stuff. Most of the footage was lost, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Okay, sorry, I'm rambling a lot, but that's what I do. So these shoes, traction, excellent. When your foot is in here, it's not gonna roll either. So I have some other shoes that I just kind of wear daily, just kind of like walking around town to the office or whatever, some Nikes and stuff. And I find when I'm really like trying to run in those and turn, my foot kind of wants to slide around inside of the shoe. These shoes don't do that. And it's not because they're stiff. I think it's just because they're so just form fit. I don't really know. I'm not really a shoe reviewer, but they just, they, they hug your foot really well and your foot isn't going to roll over in them like it will in some other shoes. So that's another huge plus. Uh, the material is a tightly woven, but somewhat breathable. These aren't going to be the most breathable shoes, but they're going to be pretty breathable. Uh, but rocks and stuff won't get into your shoe like some other more breathable type shoes. Uh, having said that, there is a model uh, in all of these shoes called GTX. What GTX means is Gore-Tex. What Gore-Tex means is uh, they're going to be waterproof. Uh, not as breathable with the Gore-Tex, but if you need a waterproof shoe, whether you're going to be running in water a lot or mud a lot, or even through snow. I've done some snow hikes in these, surprisingly, and feet stay dry and warm the whole time. So I think there's also a thing called Climashield. I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, so Climashield, which also kind of protects you from the elements, kind of keeps your feet warm. I don't really know much behind the technology, but I think it works. Like these thin shoes I've worn in the winter uh, and my feet have stayed warm. So that's, that's another thing that is interesting about some of these models. Uh, so yeah, GTX or no GTX. And like you're seeing, the cool thing about these shoes is they come in a lot of different color combos. So you can kind of get whatever suits you best. Uh, and yeah, another great thing that I like about these shoes, though some people sometimes break these things, break the laces, uh, I never have. I've owned a lot of pair of Solomons and maybe that's the problem because I own so many shoes. I don't really completely abuse the shoes as bad as some people that maybe just own one pair because I kind of cycle through them so much. But these do break for some people, but when they're not broken, they are amazing. So this is called a quick lace system and you just pull it up, pull it and that tightens it and then you suck this piece down and that keeps it tight. Now you have all this excess. There's a little pocket in the tongue. If I can get to it and show it on the video. So there's the pocket in here in the tongue. And so you can put your excess laces, tuck them, tuck the excess up into this little keeper up here. Now you're going to want to do that because if you don't do that, you have this loop hanging. And I've sometimes been lazy and not tucked it, get, tucked it into the little keeper. And even though that just takes a second, I haven't done it. And as I'm kind of like going up over a log or something, one time this caught on something and I almost tripped and fell. So you're gonna wanna use the keeper, especially if you're gonna be out running on the trails. So lacing system, I love. That's one of my favorite things about these shoes because I don't often, Oftentimes, I'll leave them pretty loose just when I'm walking around, you know, day to day. Uh, and they don't, there's not a lot of heel slippage or anything like that. Even when they're loose, when they're tight, there's no heel slippage at all, which is excellent. Uh, but when they're loose, I just slip them on and off. So you can wear them loose to where you just want to slip them on and off, but you can also tighten them down really quickly and really easily. They do have some reinforcement in kind of the high wear areas here. So durability of the shoe, I've, I've found them to be pretty durable. They're not gonna be you know, a hard use work boot, but for a little trail running shoes, I've found that they hold up really well for me anyway. And they are a nice balance of flexible, but stiff enough. Now the other thing is these, so these soles aren't the thickest. So on super pokey type terrain, these might not be your uh, best option. They don't have a, a solid plastic shank or anything in the in the, sole of the shoe. 
So if you're going to be going on stuff that may penetrate your shoe or it may just be sharp and kind of like poke through, not necessarily penetrate, but kind of put weird uh, sharp pressure onto your foot, these might not be the best option for you there either. But I mean, overall, just a really great shoe. Uh, I would consider them a lightweight shoe. They're not the lightest shoe on the market, but they're not he heavy by any means. Some ultra light shoe runner people may say they're a little heavy, but to me, and I own dozens and dozens of pairs of shoes, they're on the light side. I, I would consider them a light shoe for me personally. In terms of how stiff the shoe is, uh, it's kind of a happy medium. It's flexible enough to be comfortable in just your day-to-day -day use, but stiff enough to really hold up for kind of lighter hikes. I just this last weekend went on an unexpected like 15 mile hike uh, wearing these and they were fine. I mean, my, my feet and my whole body kind of hurt because I haven't been on a hike that long in a while. Uh, but they can handle hikes just fine. I wouldn't necessarily say they're great, uh, a great backpacking shoe though. If you have extra weight, they don't really have like ankle support or anything like that. So they're kind of a lower shoe. So backpacking, probably not, but most, uh, you know, unless it's like a little short day trip, you're not having a ton of weight uh, and the, the terrain isn't too ankle twisting, uh, then they could work. But like hardcore backpacking, these aren't gonna be the shoes for you. But if you're a hardcore backpacker, you already know that. You're gonna want some uh, actual hiking boots for that. So yeah, all around, a great, great all around shoe. These are the shoe I wear out to the range when I'm trying to be dynamic and move around a lot and I just don't wanna slip and fall. These are excellent. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up for the speed crosses. Uh, again, I don't review shoes that often. I may get into it more and I may develop kind of a flow and features of the shoe that I'll go through and get better at this. Uh, but if you have any questions on the shoe, feel free to ask below in the comments. Uh, I will do my best to answer them. And yeah, let's talk about a couple of the shoes real quick. Another pair of Solomons. Uh, these are the, they have the longest name. They're the XA3D Ultra 2 Pro Comps or something. These are also the GTX. If I need a shoe that is a little kind of more traditional, a little more stiff, uh, this is the shoe I go to. Uh, traction is excellent. Also, it doesn't have the crazy lugs though, so it won't do as good and it won't have as much traction on certain terrain as the speed crosses will. Uh, quick lace system as well. Uh, another great uh, pair of shoes by Solomon. I've had these forever. These are gonna last, they're gonna wear a lot better than the Speedcross 3s too. Uh, so an another pair of shoe that has some similar strengths to the Speedcross, but has kind of a more traditional sole and stuff are these bad boys as well. These are a pair of Altama, Altama, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, but Maritime Assaults, these are the low, they also come in a mid, and they come in a couple different colors. They come in multicam, obviously, and they come in like a tan, some kind of a tan, coyote or FTE type tan, and all black. So these kind of are similar to Converse, but they're a little more comfortable to me. They're kind of a narrow shoe, but I believe they're, they're wider than uh, like All Stars Chuck Taylors. Uh, and a little more supportive. They are built, you know, for special specialty use for I think the Navy SEALs, so they could fit inside fins. Uh, they have a, I think a plastic reinforced shank, uh, but they're flexible still and relatively comfortable. They're more comfortable to me than Chuck Taylors are. They have a rubber insole here that will work well with bare feet. And it also works with socks and has some drainage holes in the bend, which is really nice. So these are a great water shoe, uh, specially formulated rubber compound that grips well when wet. Uh, and yeah, just kind of a shoe that a lot that that looks cool that a lot of people are into for the looks, but also has a lot of practical functionality for uh, you know water type operations. But honestly, I got them because they look cool. I've gone on a couple short hikes with these and they've been fine. Uh, but yeah, another another cool shoe that I'll link to. All right, I think that's it. Sorry, it's it's late here. I wanted to film a video, but it's getting close to my bedtime basically, uh, and I just kind of stumbled through that shoe review. I hope I gave most of the information that you guys were looking for. Uh, but if I missed anything out, let me know. Uh, comment below. I'm always looking for feedback, constructive criticism. I mean, Phil, it's YouTube, so I'll get un uh, I'll get non-constructive criticism as well. But constructive criticism. I'll do more shoe reviews in the future and your criticism will help me create better shoe reviews in, in, in the future. So yeah, I, I do appreciate criticism. 
usually. Sometimes it hurts my feelings. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about some other projects that I have coming up. I'm building an AR-15 pistol. Uh, I have most of the parts, but I just have the rail in front of me now. This is an Aero Precision. Uh, this is a new rail, the Atlas, Atlas, I think, what's it say? Let's find it. The Atlas S1. So this is the M-Lock version, 12 inch. It is a really minimal, thin rail. You see that it only has uh, rail sections on the front and the rear portion. So really thin, comfortable rail. Uh, I saw this rail and I decided I, I wanna build a new AR. So I've been accumulating the parts and I'm gonna build it for you guys because I've got a lot of requests to do like an AR-15 build video. I wanted a new AR-15, I bought a bunch of parts, I'm gonna build it, I might as well film it. So I'm gonna be doing that soon. I will be sending these parts off, some of these parts off to be Cerakoted and give me some feedback, I have some questions. So, recently, if you follow my Instagram, if you don't follow my Instagram, go go follow me. It's uh, last line of, at last line of defense is my Instagram handle. I post p photos over there. So this is a Zev slide that I hated the finish on it forever since I got it. They kind of screwed up the finish and gave me some like digital camo that I didn't want, but I was too lazy to wait, you know nine weeks to send it back and get a different finish on it. So I just said, screw it, I'll just keep it. Uh, and I was unhappy with it forever. Anyway, new custom coating from Mad Custom Coatings. I'll link to them down below. They do awesome, awesome work. I met them when I was out at TriggerCon. Con. They showed me some of their multi-cam type patterns called uh, like Madland camo, I think they call it. But really, it's, like, it's similar to multi-cam. This one, they custom formulated this kind of FTE color to match my weird, it's technically an OD frame, uh, but it looks more FTE. Anyway, cool paint job I got on this. I'll be posting more pictures of it on Instagram. I've already posted one, I think, on there. But yeah, so this company, I'm gonna engage to Cerakote my AR-15. I love Multicam Black, as you can see, triple out design hat here. I love Multicam Black. So I think I'm gonna do a multicam black type Cerakote and I might do it with like OD green accents. That's what I have in my head right now anyway. I'm not sure if I'll move forward with that or not, but if you guys have thoughts on a Cerakote color or pattern or anything like that, let me know. Also, I've been talking about it, CZP10. There's some things I didn't love about it. I'm gonna get some work done to it. I'm gonna get some serrations. I'm probably gonna get some Cerakote. I got a new trigger from HB Industries that I'm gonna be installing. Uh, I'm gonna toss an RMR on this puppy. So a CZ P10C project is coming up and it's gonna be sweet. So stay tuned. I mean, again, go follow my Instagram channel. I post pictures on there. So pictures, you know, for gun sexiness is, is better sometimes. So P10C project coming up, this cool paint job. You guys have heard probably, uh, I know because I've gotten dozens of emails about it, the M&P M2.0 is coming out in a four inch 15 round version. Basically the same size as a Glock 19. I'm stoked about it. If you didn't watch my recent pistol review video, I compared a bunch of uh, the most popular kind of polymer striker fired nine millimeter pistols. And I love the M&P M2.0 way more than I thought I would. And I said, either in the video or in the comments or both, that if M&P released that same gun in a Glock 19 size gun, they would have a winner on their hands. And they did it. I mean, it wasn't because of my video, but they did it right after my video. Coincidence? Mm, I don't know. Sorry, my dog is chewing loudly on a bone, so if you hear that, that's what's going on there. But he always comes in here and chews on bones when I'm filming videos because I just leave the door open so it comes in and out. So yeah, oh this, <laughs> this is the Magpul wrench. If you're wondering what I'm flinging around here. Uh, I had it because I was gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna build an AR-15. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing that. Also in a video, last video or a couple videos back, I talked about like my random, some random tech stuff. And oh, also Gen 5 Glock. 
yeah, I don't have one yet because I have so many Glocks I wasn't like, didn't feel inclined to get it and I wasn't gonna be one of those first videos that goes viral with the Glock Gen 5, but I'm gonna get a Glock Gen 5 or two and I'll talk about those on the channel too. Maybe I'll compare the new M&P M2.0, which I've already ordered, uh, I've pre-ordered it, so I'll be getting it pretty soon and I'll compare that maybe to a Glock Gen 5 if I have one at that point. So yeah, also things I mentioned earlier. So I have a 3D printer and I print cool stuff. This is a vase. So my printer, I'll link to it below, is a CR10. And I got that because I wanted to print larger things like this vase. Uh, well, what for? I don't, I don't know. Just because 3D printers are super cool and super nerdy. Uh, and when you have them, you want to build big stuff like this with this like special multi-color changing filament. Anyway, some of you nerds out there wanted to hear more about my setup, so I'll be doing a video of that in the future too. And I don't know. I think I had other stuff to talk about, but but I forgot. I forgot. I keep on talking about making my website. I got some new patches. I got an OD patch. You know what? I'm going to give an OD patch away. If you're watching this video right now, and you're one of the first ones to watch it, I'm gonna give one of you an OD patch. And I'm just, I'm thinking on the fly here. Okay, the first person to comment, and don't just like make a comment and then edit it and change it because I'll see because I'll be monitoring this video. The first person to comment what model, yeah, first person to comment the model number of this RMR. Comment, and you win a free patch, an OD patch, if you want one. So, you comment, if you're the first one, I will comment after you, giving you instructions on what to do next. First person to comment on the model of this RMR gets a free patch. That's not, that's not a cool prize, but I wasn't even planning on giving away a prize, but yeah. I don't know what else, guys. I don't know what else. I don't know if you can tell, you probably can. I'm getting a little tired and delirious. So I'm just gonna cut this video off. Thanks for watching. So have a great day slash night and I'll catch you guys later.